In this video I'm going to show you how to use a wildfire Photoshop action. So I'm going to use this photo here uh, as an example for a demonstration. So I'm going to create from this photo this effect here and uh, using this action. So what the action does, as you can see it creates these, uh, these flames, this fire effect, Okay, the, it creates the flames, the embers, the, the smoke, uh, fire cracks. Okay, and uh, what the action also does, it uh, it creates this uh, lighting effect okay and also I'm going to customize this effect to create this one here okay so I'm going to show you how can you uh, easily change the colors and uh, I also going to uh, show you some tips uh, using this example here so here I have brushed for these areas play the action and uh, this is the effect that I got so I just want to show you this example here some tips about uh, about the lighting effect. Okay. So I'm just gonna close these two windows here and get back to our photo. So when you open up your photo, there are a couple of things that you should check uh, to make sure the action will run without any errors. So the first thing that you should check is that uh, your photo is uh, is a background layer, so it should be called a background and have this little lock icon. So if you got something like this. Uh, or anything else, just go to the layer new and just choose a background from layer. Okay, and that step will make your uh, photo a background layer. Uh, then click on this little arrow here and choose panel options and just make sure this option here is checked. Okay, uh, then go, do, uh, go to the image mode and uh, make sure your photo is in RGB color mode, 8 bit channel, and you should check the image size. So Resolution can be anywhere from 72 uh, and higher. And uh, for the size, you should use photos that are at least about 2500 pixels wide or high. Okay. Uh, the best range is from about uh, 2500 to 3500 pixels wide or high photos. Okay. So this size is okay. So just gonna choose okay. And uh, uh, to load the brushes, you can just uh, hit B on your keyboard and uh, right click anywhere over the canvas and uh, just click on this gear icon and go to the load brushes and uh, just choose the brush files that can be downloaded, click load the brush will appear in your brushes panel and uh, to load the actions go to window actions and click on this little arrow here load actions and just choose the action that can be downloaded okay click load the action will appear in the actions panel and you'll find uh, two actions here, uh, the wildfire and the update lighting. So uh, now what you have to do is to go to the layer, new layer, to create a new layer and just name it brush. And it's very important that all letters are lowercase, so you must uh, write the brush exactly like this, otherwise the action won't work. Let's choose OK. And now hit B on your keyboard again to select the brush tool. Uh, just going to use this soft brush and you can choose any color here color is not matter and uh, uh, all you have to do now is to just brush over the areas where you wish the uh, fire to appear uh, so and uh, make sure that uh, your opacity and the flow is set to 100% okay before you start brushing so just gonna brush like this and you don't have to brush too thick lines because a fire will be created around this okay so just gonna brush like this and all you have to do now is to just uh, play the action so just select the wildfire action uh, click on the play button so I'm going to fasten the video here uh, and get back to when the action is finished and then I'm going to go throughout all the layers to show you how can you customize uh, the results that you got okay so the action has just finished so I'm just going to close the action panel for now and uh, Let's just expand this panel. Okay, so the first thing that you probably want to do when uh, the action is finished is to quickly close down all these folders, okay, because it will going to be much more easier to work with the layers. So uh, how to quickly do that is to just hold Control and Alt buttons or Command Option for a Mac and just click on the little arrow here where this group is selected, and the action will select it automatically. Okay, so that way we close down all the folders. And uh, let's see what we got here. So this is the brush layer that uh, he made on the beginning of the video. And uh, 
why I got this brush layer here is because the action is made so every time you run the action you'll get a unique result okay so uh, if even if you use the same brush area so if I just remove this group here and play the action again uh, I will get unique results so this uh, fire will always have a different form all these flames the embers will have a different will be differently arranged and will have different form okay so what I like to do is sometimes just go to image and just duplicate this uh, my whole file uh, and uh, then just delete this group and play the action again and then check see which result I like the more so you can do that as much times as you want and uh, and then if this one uh, looks better to me then just close down uh, other windows okay so that's why you got this brush layer here just gonna turn it off for now and uh, this is a wire file folder so this is the effect and uh, what I like to do when I start customizing the effect is to just turn off the lighting so I first customize uh, the fire and then just go to the lighting and uh, add lighting if I, if I want and customize that uh, layers okay so let's see what we got here this is the tone folder so if I just turn it over and on you see it really makes a, a big difference in the look of the fire so what we got here is the color adjustment so when you double click here uh, you can change the filter here or use a custom color okay and uh, uh, you got a density here so you can see the difference when I increase the density okay so just gonna use uh, this value and uh, this is the uh, contrast one so this will just add a little bit of the contrast uh, to the fire and if you like you can choose any channel here and make any changes okay and I usually just make change when I change the colors so I'm just gonna show you that later and uh, this layer contrast 2 is also giving a contrast if I change it off and on this one you'll see the difference so uh, all you have to do to change the contrast is just click on the word opacity here and uh, just drag it aside okay so if this is too much for you of contrast you can just turn off uh, hide this layer here and then you can even lower the opacity of this one here okay I'm just gonna use the default and uh, also as you, what you can notice here is that all these layers have a layer masks so these layer masks are making that these all these adjustments are, are applied only to the fire effect and not outside of that and I'm gonna also show you later how to apply them uh, to the other parts of your photo if you like and I almost always use that when I'm using the lighting effect okay so after I finish with customizing all of these layers and go to the lighting I'm gonna get back uh, get back to the tone and uh, uh, change that okay uh, what we got here is the reveal details it says brush white the mask layer and uh, if you just turn it over and on you'll see no changes because the layer has a layer mask here so uh, if you just hold the shift button and click on this layer mask uh, uh, I'm going to I show the layer actually so what this layer does it will reveal the details uh, on the place where you brush white so all you have to do is to pick a brush tool okay pick some soft brush and uh, just set foreground color to white and on the areas where you brush it will reveal the details okay so what I like to do here is to just hide all these layers so you can clearly see where my subject is and uh, then just brush like this okay just gonna turn them on so if I turn it off, I'm gonna turn off this one so when I turn off and on this layer you see the difference it really reveals uh, a lot of details under the fire uh, so I'm just gonna lower the opacity a little bit so you can just click the word opacity and drag it aside okay gonna make them something like this okay uh, what we got here are the embers so if I just hide this group you'll see uh, the difference here so uh, it's a layer you got two layers and you can select any of these two layers and just using a move tool you can just click and drag you can 
move them if you like we can also press control or command T and uh, we can transform them okay um, also you can play with your opacities here if you like and if you feel like there's too much embers there you can just simply hide one of these two layers or even if you used to create more embers you can just duplicate any of these layers you can just hold out or option click and drag it above and get more embers okay and uh, you'll see that both of these layers have these uh, adjustment layer above them so when you double click there you can change the colors you can see the difference of the embers okay and if you wish to remove any part of the embers you can just select its layer mask and brush with the black just like that or simply brush into this main layer mask that will remove any of the embers okay I'm just gonna leave the uh, these two layers uh, like this and this is the glow so if you just turn it off and on you'll see a difference and this the opacity is uh, about a, is set to 50% so you can just hold and drag okay you can change that much so you're just gonna increase it a little bit something like this okay and uh, you got a uh, fire glow color layer here so when you just double click there uh, you can change the color of the glow okay and if you wish you can hide the glow if you don't want it or you can simply remove any part of the glow by brushing black into the this or this layer mask okay so uh, and this is a fire folder so uh, here where the guide is the uh, is a fire tint so as you can see without this layer the, the fire is pretty much yellow so this will make a much more realistic effect and you can also change the filter here or the density I usually use this as default and I change the filter when I'm changing the color okay so I'm also going to show you I'm going to change that later when I create a second example that I have shown you with a different color uh, what you got here are the color layers. If you wish to change the fire color, you can just turn on this layer. But why the um, color look like this? Because of this layer here, because it affects this as well, and also the tone. So later I will change the colors. So I'm going to show you more about changing the colors. And uh, the the fire is a layer. So you got a uh, three fire layers. Okay. And uh, each of these fire layers got these uh, brightness layers. So what I like to do is to just simply turn off and on these layers, see how it looks. Sometimes it looks better with this one, sometimes not. Okay. And uh, also, what you can do is double click here, and you'll see that the brightness of these layers is, uh, is lowered. So you can increase the brightness as much as you like. So just going to increase it to something like this. And uh, oops, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna do the same with this one here. So just turn it off and on. And this one looks uh, pretty much well like this. So just gonna leave it like that. And uh, just check this one here. So just gonna double click here, increase a little bit the brightness like this. Okay. And what you got here are the ashes. These are the small black particles. Okay. And you can also transform them. Press Control T. You can scale them move them, rotate them, okay, you can duplicate them uh, you can just go right click, duplicate layer okay, and um, create more ashes layers, okay and we just, uh, you can remove any part of the fire by brushing black into the this layer mask just like this, or any of those layer mask and uh, you can hide the, uh, the fire layer to create a little bit different Effect okay. Uh, what we got here is the fire cracks. Okay, so they're not too much visible because of the fire, and uh, they are consist of two layers. And you can also change their color. You can change the opacity. I'm just gonna leave them default. And what we got here are the smoke. It's a smoke group. So just hide. And show you see the it makes a really big difference here and uh, uh, so it's a layer it's consists from the you got a two black smoke layers okay and 
and you got this one the white smoke and you got this one the large smoke this is just gonna create some smoke all over the the photo but uh, it's got a low opacity okay so also what you can do here you can change the opacity of any of those uh, layers you can hide some of the smoke layers if you like and also you got this uh, layer says white smoke too so if you just turn it on you return the black smoke to layer to the white and it's the same with this one here okay so all these layers has a layer mask you can brush with the black into any of these layer masks to remove that part of the layer or you can brush simply into the, this main layer mask to remove any of the smoke layers from the place where you brush like this okay so now I'm just gonna uh, I have finished with customizing the fire effect so I'm just gonna turn on the lighting okay so let's just open the folder so you can see these are very these uh, layers you got a fire gleam uh, you got a photo tint, the light tint, the photo darkening this is the actual the uh, this layer is creating this lighting effect okay and uh, it will darken all other areas uh, except uh, this one this one here so it automatically creates some lighting from the fire and uh, uh, you got a reduce the highlight, the saturated photo and the boost highlights okay and uh, these two la three layers are usually always leave to default and uh, they're making some uh, changes uh, for uh, better this uh, lighting effect uh, and uh, let's start with the with this layer here so if I just select this layer mask and uh, using the move tool move I'm just gonna move the lighting okay so what I'm going to do I'm just gonna move it uh, above somewhere here okay and uh, you will see uh, the opacity is at the 85 percent so you can change that as well okay and uh, what I want to do here is I want to create these uh, lighting effect manually okay I sometimes just use this one that the action has created but sometimes you I want to uh, just create it manually. So what I want to do is select this layer mask and just uh, set here the white color and press uh, Shift and F5 just to, to the field with a foreground color. Okay, so now I have removed the, any of the lighting effects. So now what I like to do is to lower this opacity, to lower the darkening, and then just pick a brush tool and choose a, a black color. So all places where you brush now will uh, be you will create a light on that place okay you can see so why I have lowered the uh, past to this one because I can know uh, you can better s you can see your photo there okay if it's a higher uh, price like this you can see the details of your photo well so just gonna lower it something like this and now you can brush exactly where you wish to create the light effect so I just gonna uh, using these square brackets on the keyboard just gonna I make the size of the brush smaller and uh, this is gonna lower the opacity and they're gonna lower the flow a little bit so now what you're going to do it's just gonna brush with the black just like this in the place where I wish to create a, the light effect okay just like this here and if you just press alt or option the layer mask you're gonna see so in these places where we got a white color the lighting there is no lighting and uh, where is black there uh, as much as color goes to, uh, as color goes from the white to the black the lighting is more and more visible so where I got a darker color the lighting is uh, have a higher density than uh, here okay so as the lighting is strongest to the to the source here so just gonna brush a bit more like this okay th that's why he lowered the the opacity so when you just pull one line it will be uh, very uh, it will have a uh, very low uh, opacity so on that way you can create uh, the lighting effect so goes with the, the 
higher density to the lower so for example pull the line like this and then just add more and more and more like this okay so you can create that the lighting is um, has higher density on the source and goes uh, density is lowering as you are moving uh, uh, far from the source okay so I'm just I'm gonna stop back to remove those lines okay so that's why I'm brushing the most here here the lighting needs to be the as a higher density and then it goes you can also so hold and alter options here to start the layer mask and then brush here if it's easier to you so this and what I also like to do if I create it somewhere I think that the, the lighting is uh, has too much density here so then I just set from your color to white it's going to increase the brush and then you can just click a little bit like this okay or even lower this opacity even more and then just lower the density of that part okay just like this I'm just gonna click Alt here again and now I'm just gonna increase the opacity to the default to see the result okay so I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna pick the brush tool again and uh, what I like to do is to set a, a white color here and move the opacity flow both to 100 and then just brush over the places where I want to remove it uh, remove the lighting effect just like this okay and uh, just gonna lower the opacity to about uh, something like this lower the flow and I'm gonna choose the black color add a little bit of the lighting over here and over here you can easily always remove the just gonna brush over here again okay just gonna lower the opacity you can always remove the um, lighting later so that's not a problem so now just switch to the white just gonna increase the opacity something like this so just gonna remove the lighting here where I have brush now So I just use the square brackets for quickly changing the size of the brush. Okay, just like that. And just gonna remove the density a little bit over here. And I'll just check the layer mask. Okay. So the density, the lighting is the has a higher density here, and it's lowering here as you are going away from the light source. Okay, I'm just gonna brush a little bit more with the white here. Okay, to lower the density a little bit more. Just gonna click like this, and I'll just check the result. Okay, and I'm just gonna change darkening something like this so if you just hold the shift button and click this layer mask you're, you're gonna remove the, the lighting and when you uh, turn on the layer mask you're gonna get the lighting you created okay so uh, let me just uh, this is the uh, light tint so just gonna give the tint to the, the, the lighting and uh, photo tint is going to add the tints to the, to the whole photo okay you can double click there to change the color so when you change the fire color you usually change this one here so I'm just gonna leave it like this and uh, the fire gleam okay uh, and uh, 
you can uh, change these opacities of these layers and also uh, the 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 densities of the layer mask but first thing I'm going to do so always when you change make any changes to the to the lighting okay like I have made now just select these action here and just click play uh, so this action will just uh, update the, the lighting okay so it will update all these layers uh, according to the your new uh, light source and just like this so we just do the fire gleam so as you can see uh, uh, what I like to do with these layers is something to just select it and to make these edges smoother uh, just select this layer mask you just add a little bit of the Gaussian blur like 10 someone sometimes 5 to 10 okay just like that so you can increase this opacity here okay uh, also what you can do is to change the density of the layer mask so as you're lowering the density, uh, the, the fire gleam will also fill uh, all uh, other uh, areas inside uh, that are uh, that are uh, highlighted. Okay, so you can also change the density of this layer mask here. So if you wish to lower just the density of the light of the overall light, so if you if you wish to lower the density of the specific part of the light, then you just brush with a white color with the lower the opacity over there. Okay, like this. Uh, but if you if you wish to lower the overall uh, density of the light, what you can do is just lower this density here. So then this layer will also that is darkening the photo will also darken a little bit your lighting area. So it's now set to uh, ninety percent. So if you move it uh, to the one hundred, it's going to increase the lights a little bit. So just going to leave it like this. So you can on this way you're lowering the overall uh, lighting uh, brightness. Okay. So. I'm pretty much happy with this result. I just quickly see the before and after. So from this photo, we have brushed over here, and this is the effect. Okay, so now just gonna change the colors to create a uh, second example that I have show you. So uh, just gonna go to the fire, and just gonna turn on these three layers. Okay, and then select the fire thing, double click here, and also going to change these according to my color. So just gonna choose the calling filter. Just like this, uh, I'm just gonna change the glow color. Okay, something like this, and uh, I'm gonna change the embers color. Both of the embers layers. Okay, gonna do the same with the uh, fire cracks. So uh, when you see. Uh, I usually choose the same color for the embers and the uh, fire cracks, okay, and um, of course you can experiment with the different colors, you can use one color for embers, one for like fire cracks, one for a fire glow, and so on, okay. I'm just going to use these uh, on these two layers the same as I have been using here. And uh, what I have to change more is the tone, so just going to change here to the cone filter as well, just like this. So you can change the density and also I forgot to show you so after I finish with customizing then I uh, go to these layers here and uh, let me just go a steps back okay so uh, I just want to show you after you after you finish with customizing okay if you finish with customize the light you have updated the lighting just go back to these layers here and if you just hold the shift button and hide all these layer masks uh, you will see the difference so when you hide this layer mask then these uh, layers will affect also your uh, light area now it's affecting only the fire so what I like to do is to just open the properties panel you can find it uh, here and uh, as you're lowering the density uh, these layers will more affect this lighting area so I'm just going to use this time about a 50%, so just going to put a 50% value for all these layers here, you see the difference, okay? So now they're affecting the lighting area, okay? So now let's just get uh, change the color again, so I want to change the uh, color uh, to this one, so just going to change the 
I'll move this to the, these values, this is going to move to uh, 115. And here I'm also going to change the uh, cooling filter and let's get back to the lighting. So as you can see now, uh, we must change the lighting color according to our uh, fire color. So here you're going to use this same color, so just going to double click here, select this, press Control C and just go here or Command C and Control or Command V to, to, uh, to paste the color. And here you're going to paste it as well, just going to use a little bit dark color, a little bit different shade like this. Okay. Okay, that's it. So you can see how you can uh, quickly change the colors uh, to any color that you like. And uh, what I want to show you here is how this uh, lighting layer mask uh, looks. Okay, so just gonna select uh, this. So as we got a fire source here, the lighting is uh, high, higher density here, and it's lowering as you go uh, away from the as you go away from the fire source. And how you create this? I'm just gonna hide this layer to show you quickly a few tips. So uh, I'm gonna fill it with white and just hide the sharpening. So uh, also just lower the opacity here so you can clearly see your subject. Lower the uh, opacity and the flow of the brush and just brush with a black foreground color. So you can just brush like this. And then just brush again, but now I don't go to the end of the edges, as the uh, lighting will be will have less and less density. Now I'll go from a uh, bar here. Now so this bar here, for example, if first your subject is very clearly visible, you can then just brush uh, brush more there. So. You brush a little bit like this, so you can just click multiple times on the place like this and then just brush a little bit uh, on the other areas that you wish to highlight but uh, with a low density. Okay, you can this edge is brush like this. And when you return the opacity, uh, what I like to do is just uh, change this color to white, increase this to 100 and then just brush over the edges. If I have uh, accidentally brushed outside of the subject, okay, just like this to make the corrections, okay. Just like that. And also, uh, this uh, layer has a has a feather, so if you just change it. Uh, you see it makes a difference. So sometimes if you just uh, want to remove uh, some a part of the lighting, but you see, for example, you move the line here, but it's not removed exactly the area this because of these feathers. So it's making a little bit of changes. I usually, uh, it's default, by default it's about a, it's a 10 pixels. So I use usually five to 10 pixels value there, okay? So on that way, uh, you can create uh, this lighting effect. And uh, after you after you're finished with the customizing, what you can add more to your design is to just select your uh, uh, top layer, the, the folder, and hold Alt, Control, Shift, or Command, Option, Shift, and E uh, to make a Snapchat, and then just hold Control, Shift, and U, or Command, Shift, U to desaturate the photo, go to the filter, other high pass, set radius to two pixels, and just change the blending mode to the hard light. So this will add uh, a sharpening. Okay, it's just gonna name this layer. This layer will give you a sharpening to your photo, and now you have to do is to click on the red opacity and control the sharpening of that way, okay? Okay, so I hope you understood everything, but uh, if you still, if you have, if you have any troubles with the action, or you got any questions, 
Uh, feel free to contact me anytime via my Invato profile page. Thanks.